What's up guys? It's Missy. I am back with another SimCity Build It video. And today we're going to talk about how to prep your factories for the contest of mayors. Now, it's going to be a little bit more than just how to prep the factories, but why you're prepping them the way that you are and what factory tasks you should be doing and or preparing for. So a lot of you guys have been, you know, struggling with this one and I've never really done a com prep video in terms of what to prep because of the fact that everybody's game is different, everybody's schedule is different. And so I wanted to give you guys the underlying <coughs> um, information that you would need to make that choice. So without actually knowing your game, what level you are and things like that, it's, it's gonna be a little difficult to tell you, you know, what you should do specifically. But when it comes to your factories, I can help you with that, okay? Now, let's talk about uh, hitting that subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. We are so unbelievably close to 1,000 subscribers. And I am so unbelievably sick and tired of having to stream to the Omelette app, which, by the way, I'm going to be doing that this morning here in just a few minutes. So uh, be sure to check that out. And if you have any questions, you guys can always hit me up on a live stream or Facebook, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Okay, now, your factories. Are you level 24? Are you level 11? I don't know what level you are, but whatever level you are, you're going to base that on what you choose. So let's just go ahead and talk about the most common people that play the contest of mayors are going to be between levels 20 and 24. Those are the main people that I'm training right now. So you're level 24, you have feed, glass, sugar. Those are your options for nighttime, okay? Now, I want to show you guys a couple of things that you're going to want to look at before you make your uh, selection here. So first off, what do we know about the chemicals task? Okay, chemicals, as you guys have heard me talk about them in my videos, they take two hours for one round. Okay, so if you are unable to complete, let's say, all 40 um, chemicals, like in one round, you're going to have a problem. So you want to make sure that you have all your five slot factories set up. But what if you get a task that's for 43 chemicals? Well, uh, that sucks because now you got to do two rounds or you got to hope that you get those video ads and or if you click them, sometimes the first one will have a little video symbol on it. Now, there's been a rumor going around that you don't get video ads if you've ever made an in-game purchase. That is and is not true. There are people that claim that it happens, and then there are people that claim that it does not. Okay, I have now, I tested this on my feeder and on the community depot and on my other feeder, and all three of them still got video ads after an in-game purchase. So I don't know how true that is, but with the, the fact that, um, <laughs> hang on. With the fact that EA likes to just do whatever the hell they want half the time, it wouldn't surprise me if you guys are experiencing that. Now, what if it was a fluke? What if it was like the game just stopped giving them to you regardless and it has nothing to do with an in-game purchase and you don't know why. For example, there is a girl in my comm training course that plays on a Kindle. And when she does her uh, assignments, when she cancels an assignment and it gives her the timer, she is forced to wait the full 15 minutes. She doesn't, she never sees a video button ever. Now, there's no reason why that should occur. I don't know why it occurs to her. Even playing on a Kindle, that should not happen. So it appears as though there are things that certain people's games do for no rhyme or reason, okay? Uh, when you contact EA, they just give you some BS, uh, oh, restart your app, oh, uninstall it, you know, the usual crap. But really, uh, it doesn't make any sense. It's kind of like how some people can play their game all day long on mobile data, but the moment that they hook it up to Wi-Fi, it just, it will not play. But sometimes it only does that um, 
you know, it, certain types of Wi-Fi. It, it's so bizarre. You know, th there's so many really just bizarre technical issues with this game that are just unexplainable. I don't understand it. But anyways, moving on. So what do we, we know about the chemicals task. If you're able to get it done with the video ads, as we just discussed, then you can do it in one round. But here's the problem with the chemicals task. And this is also the problem with the sugars task. They come back all the time. Okay, they pop up really quite frequently. Now you cannot afford to have a lot of downtime when you play the contest. You have to keep up a routine, a pace, okay? You have to be checking in on your game frequently. Now, usually if you're somebody who's having difficulties finishing the contest of mayors every week, it's because you are slacking. It's because what here's what your your routine should consist of. Okay. I'm doing this and I have this being prepped. Doesn't mean I'm gonna do it, but I have it being prepped. I have this being prepped. I am coming over here and I, even if I don't have a task for it, I'm making sure that all of my shops are prepped. I am constantly hunting the U and Dozer. I'm planning on if I'm gonna have to do an Epic, I gotta get that done. You're looking ahead all the time, okay? If you have any downtime at all, you're gonna take that downtime and you're going to say, okay, I've got four hours where I can't do anything on this specifically. But that doesn't mean you don't have, that you have four hours, you can't do anything. It means you're not getting anything done in terms of the task being cleared. But there's plenty of things that you could be doing to speed things up when you clear that task. Okay. When that happens, let's say that you are in a situation where it's like, okay, I'm going to bed in three hours, right? but it's not for three more hours. So if your, if your task list fits this, it would stand a reason that you would want to start making um, the feed or whatever. But here's the one trick that you can do, okay? First off, let's talk about which one you should prep. I would prep feed. Let's say it's the beginning of the contest. It's 12 hours before the contest starts. Which factory item should you produce well here's the thing it depends on you and your oh shit hold on just a second there's a bad car accident hang on anyway i uh, just got back from dealing with that so um bad wreck happened right as i was going through the the light there uh girl's okay but she is pretty shook up as you can see here on the side of the <coughs> the city truck there's a damage to the door and then she hit that that little light that's there on the side and kind of went down the whole thing and just ripped the car apart so yeah it was uh pretty bad but she's okay i got out and checked on her because when i had first arrived uh there was only one guy there and then the guy that was in the the truck um so I went up to the the car and I was like, oh shit. But she was on the phone. She appeared to be okay. So that's good. Anyway, she had the right of way. She was proceeding through a, a green light and the guy pulled out in front of her and just didn't judge his time right. And yeah, so that's going to be a gnarly wreck. And a lot of paperwork and drama. So I didn't want her to get screwed. So I wanted to get uh, a witness statement done. So I did. And yeah. Anyway, let's get back to the game. So. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Factory tasks. Now, you guys, there's, let's, let's talk about what we know about the factory tasks, okay? Chemical tasks, they come back all the time, okay? Uh, they're usually not worth more than 2,000 points. It's really rare if they are. And um, they're just, they're all around, they're repetitive. Same with the sugar, okay? Sugar is even more annoying than chemicals because it can be worth more than 2,000 points more frequently. It pops up a lot. And what ends up happening is you have to take into account when it's okay to do factory production tasks and when it's not. Now, uh, metal and uh, minerals and seeds and, and wood and things like that, those, those are fine. Okay, but it's the ones that are two hours or longer. So chemicals and all the others. Now, the best time that you, what, what you can do is prep these before bed. But 
here's a little trick. If you have to do two rounds and you do not get video ads, or you don't expect you're going to get video ads, if you know you have to do two rounds anyways, like let's say that you had uh, a feed task for, let's say 45 feed, okay? And you knew that you were going to be doing other tasks in the meantime, but you didn't want to jam up all of your factory slots just yet because you're not going to bed yet. This happens all the time, you guys, where you're not quite ready to, to fill up all your factories, but you don't want to waste time by not starting them. So what you can do is, if you have to make 45 of them, uh, you can start making five of them now. Like, let's say it's real early in the morning and uh, you don't want to jam up your whole day just yet. Make five of them now and leave the other factory slots open for the time being, okay? Then before bed, what you can do is collect those five and then start the feed at, for your nighttime so that the moment you wake up in the morning, you're able to collect on those feed. You're able to do this because those tasks take so long, they put such a long timer on those tasks that you have plenty of time to leave those factory slots open, collect the shorter end of the second half first, and then do the full, the full uh, thing of them um, you know, during your nighttime run. So if you're confused about what I mean, let's say, let's say it's like uh, five o'clock at night, okay? And you're going to bed at let's say 10, 11 o'clock. So that's six hours. Instead of jamming up your entire, all your factories, so that if you were to proceed on and do something, like let's say you were to proceed on and do other tasks, <coughs> and you were to get a seeds task, now all your factories are full of feed. You don't want to do that. You want to keep some factories open. But you want to have them open so that when you go to bed, you can put up the second batch. So what's the best way to deal with this? The best way to deal with this would be to say, okay, it's five o'clock now, I'm going to bed at 11. I'm going to put down five feed, saying I had to make 45, so I have, to I have a total of 40 factory slots. I'm going to put down five feed now. Those five feed will be done, okay? They'll be done in six hours, right before I go to bed. I can do all my other tasks, and this allows me to leave 35 factory slots open so that if I get other factory tasks, like metal and things, I can actually do them. Then, before bed, I'm going to start my feed task, collect those five, and then put up the other 40. That way, when I wake up in the morning, I'll be able to collect the second half of the feed. Does that make sense? And this will allow you to get things done. Now, what you don't want to do is make it, if you have, let's say it's the beginning of the contest and you have a factory production task that absolutely needs cleared right away. You can't just do uh, all these other tasks in the meantime and let that sit for nighttime, okay? You got to make sure that you're making the correct choice first. A lot of people try to cut corners and try to pair up their tasks and try to, you know, put all of their, their factories at night. You can't always do that. You know, sometimes you can, but sometimes you can't. So just keep that in mind. Now, let's say it's 12 hours before the contest and you want to know, well, what factory tasks should I, I prep? Well, think back to your game. What do you normally get? If you're somebody who never gets feed tasks, then why would you prep them, right? If you never get them, why would you prep them? If you know that your game is going to give you glass and or you think it will because you always get glass, then prep that. But if it were me, if saying that you, you don't really have a, a routine of things that you normally get, I would prep the feed, okay? Because it takes the longest. It has the ability to be worth quite a bit of points, you know, the most. It's usually worth around 2,300 to 2,000 to 2,300 points. And it has a less chance of coming back than chems or sugar. Those ones usually come back almost all, like I would say 50 to 60% of the time they reoccur. Okay. Whereas feed, it's like 10 to 20% of the time. Now you don't want to clear factory tasks if they're below 2000 points. Okay. But if it's like 1950, that's close enough to 2000 points. So let's say that you have, uh, let's say you have a feed for 2000 points. Okay. It's the beginning of the contest but you have no other tasks that are really high value. It would stand a reason that you would want to 
proceed on and, and continue doing what you're supposed to do and then prep, the, prep those feet at night and then consider clearing them depending on your task list. But if you are in a situation where you are seeing it for less than 1800, do not touch it, okay? In, in rare circumstances, if you're like full of, of upgrade tasks and <coughs> non-premiums and you have nothing rotatable, then maybe, maybe, it would depend. But pretty much plan on not touching any factory production tasks that are less than 1800 points ever, okay? Just plan on that. Now, <coughs> I'm gonna explain why that is. So there's a guy in my comm training course and he's running very low on time. And um, you know what, I'm gonna pull up his messages super quick. So I want you guys to see his list and see exactly what I'm referring to. Okay, so for instance, this right here, okay? He had sent me a message saying that he was going to prep. Uh, okay, so let me go back up just a little bit here because this is some a mistake that he made that was really, really bad. And I want to explain why it was a bad mistake, okay? Let's see. There was my explanation as to why it was a mistake. And now I'm going to explain. Okay, right here. So he sends me a message and uh, he says it's... <coughs> This piece of shit phone is not taking screenshots because it's slowing me down. I got a launch 2VU for 2,000 points and caps for 1950. I have a few caps made and, and on a gold token so I can run that while doing VU. Now, you guys, the next, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes of what I say is extremely important, so pay attention, okay? These are vital mistakes that a lot of people are making. And, and I mean a lot of people. And that is why I'm using these screenshots as an example to show you guys what exactly it is that you may be doing wrong if you're playing like this. So first off, what do we need to look at? Let's, let's just, we need to do a review. We need to do a setting the scene so I have an idea of where we're at. You know, are we a, a level 11 player in uh, City League or are we a level 24 player in Mega League? You know, I need to have an idea of what exactly it is that we're dealing with before I can even listen to anything. Now, for you guys, uh, we're gonna set the scene super quick. He's level 24. He has 40 tasks remaining, meaning he's done 20 tasks and he has a 26, he has 26,000 points. 20 tasks, 26,000 points. That is terrible, okay? That is terrible, absolutely terrible. He has three days and two hours left, meaning he's had two days and he's done 20 tasks. Again, not moving quick enough, okay? <clears throat> so, the first vital mistake, what can we assess from this message alone? Now remember, if you guys have not seen my critical thinking video on the comm pretest, I, first off, I encourage that you take the test and watch the video, okay? But I'm gonna be doing a video on critical thinking, and this is exactly what critical thinking is, okay? And I'm gonna give you guys an example here so that you guys can, can learn what it is that you need to look for and how it is that you need to watch for it. So, what am I looking for? What, what critical thinking, what assessment, what observation can I make from this particular message? Okay, so what do you guys know about the contest of mayors? Let's, let's just look at what he said. He said, I got a launch 2VU for 2,000 points and I have caps for 1950. Okay, I have few caps made. Okay, so he's prepping caps, that's good. But then he says, and a gold token. So I can run that while doing VU. This is a critical mistake. Why is this a mistake? First off, <clears throat> the first part of what he said was absolutely beneficial. He was, he was prepping and he was doing good and he was multitasking. But why is the second half the mistake? Because he's trying to pair tasks together. He's getting ahead of himself here. And he is making a point to look ahead and automatically assume that after he clears the VU that the caps are the next choice. How in the hell could he know that? He doesn't even know what he's going to get from the VU. Right?
Sorry, I had to take that keto shot. Yuck. Okay. <clears throat> so, the VU is done and bada boom. Then what happens? Now, he's got a few caps done, as he said, and he's got a golden token running. Now, just the amount of time it's going to take him to do the VU and repair it, it's going to probably be about 10 to 20 minutes at least, and he already has the golden token running, meaning that if he doesn't start to pick up on those caps, they're going to run out. That's what's going to happen. So he's almost forced to do it now because he's already got ahead of himself. You see what I'm saying? Whereas what he should have done is done the VU, left the caps sitting that were done, and planned on using a token if need be. But this happens constantly in my comm training course. People will, they'll send me a message. They'll ask me, you know, what task is the next choice? And then they'll say, okay, and they try to simplify it. And they'll say, okay, so I do this, and then I do this, and then I do this. No, no, you do this. And then if nothing better pops up, after we review everything again, then that would be your next choice. That is what you will hear me say. Never will you hear me say, yes, go do those three tasks and come back to me. Okay? That is not okay. That is bad. Every single task that you get should be thought through very meticulously. Okay? You should really be looking at all of your choices. You only get 60 tasks. And it only takes one mistake to throw you off course, okay? Now, there are some mistakes that are really bad and they, they're not correctable. Like you fucked up your whole week and there's no helping you. And then there's other mistakes that aren't too bad and you have a way of correcting them if you catch them early. Now, a lot of people, what happens in my Calm Training course is they get, a, they have a safety net. Okay, I am their safety net. What happens is 90% of the choices that, let, let's say they've been in comm training for like three weeks. After about three weeks, depending on the person, of course, everybody's different, but they start to make about 90% correct choices. So they start to build up this confidence level, right? And because they'll send me their screenshots, they'll tell me what they think they should do. And I'll say, yes, thumbs up. Now, how many of the no, we need to do this, do you get? Probably 10% of the time. But if I wasn't there to do that, how would that have affected your game? You would have failed. You would, your average would have dropped. Some of you would have just not won at all. So people, they get this sense of security because I'm there to help them. And then they win each week and they get this level of confidence like, oh, I, I know, I know, and I'm doing great. They, they don't realize how much I'm helping them, you know? And so when they go to fly little birdie on their own and they crash and burn, it's actually really bad because now they think, oh, I haven't learned anything. And then they, they question every choice they make when 90% of what they were doing was correct. And so I'm trying to break that cycle. I don't want people to depend 100% on me to, to be their safety net. <laughs> and then the moment I'm not there, they crash and burn. And then all of a sudden they, they start questioning everything that they do, right? So I started a new technique, and that is where after a couple of times in comm training, depending on the person's progress, I send them off on their own for one round. They take screenshots, and they send them to me as they do them, and they give me notes. They, you know, they'll send in their first one and say, okay, I'm making this decision. This is what's going on. I don't have the monster here. This is what's going on in my game, and this is why I didn't do this. And then I, I watch them through the week. And if they make a mistake, I don't tell them. I, don't, I do not tell them, but I make note of it. And that way <clears throat> I can go back through at the end of the week and say, okay, this is where you made your mistake. And show them what exactly it is that they're doing wrong, rather than have them in calm training for two months and have them crash and burn, right? So this is, a learning experience for all of you out there to pay very close attention to so that if you're making this mistake, you can correct it. Because here's another problem that a lot of you guys are going to have, okay? A lot of you guys, you may win or you may think that you're doing okay because you're running a 2K average. But how many of you are probably making mistakes that you don't even know you're making? 
And if you don't know you're making them, you don't know to correct them. And I can't, I can't be out there to help everybody. I wish I could, but I can't, okay? <clears throat> so you're gonna have to use my, my videos. You're gonna have to use my videos as a way, as a, as a teaching tool and as a, a way to uh, see how well you've done. Okay, and I'm going to be making up another test coming up in this uh, next couple of days. It's going to be another pretest because I don't think anybody's ready for a real test and plan on that. So if you're somebody who really wants to do good, then watch for that test to come out. Okay. Okay. So that is his first mistake. That is something he needs to improve on. Me as a teacher, I'm trying to figure out what he's doing wrong, what he needs to improve on, so that when he flies on his own, he doesn't crash and burn. This is something he needs to work on. He cannot pair tasks together. He cannot get ahead of himself. He should have never started that gold token until he knew that CAPS was the correct choice. Let me, tell, let me explain it to you this way. Let's say that when he cleared that VU, he got a, up, let's say he got a uh, Tokyo 3000 for flights. He would have had a token running out that he would have had to collect on. And that would have pretty much forced him into either having to let the token run out or collect one cap and continue to have that token running and then do the, the Tokyo flights or do the, the caps before the Tokyo flights. See, so now it's causing problems. It's causing you to either waste materials and, and tokens or it's causing you to waste points and choices and, and screw things up. If you do this enough, it will start to really hurt your score. That is a very vital mistake. A gold token is already really fast, okay? So the, the 10 minutes that it would have taken him to do the VU, it would have been better just to wait the damn 10 minutes, okay? The 10 minutes isn't gonna make or break him. And it would have saved him a lot of problems. You see what I'm saying? So just keep that in mind if you make this mistake. Okay, moving on to the next mistake. Now, if you pay very close attention, he has 40 tasks here, okay? So he doesn't send in a screenshot until he has 38 tasks, meaning that after the VU, he did the caps because the caps aren't here. I never got that screenshot. Now, the chairs are below the war deliveries. So war deliveries was the last thing that he got, meaning when he did the VU, he got the chairs. And when he did the caps, he got the deliveries, okay? Now, here's his problem. Let's look at what he says. He says, starting more deliveries. Okay, this is the correct choice, okay? But then he, he gets a Paris right here. So after war deliveries, he gets a, a Paris flight, and then he has the garden chairs. Now, this is where he makes his second really big mistake here. He says, this one I'm having a hard time with. I know Paris flights are, aren't premium, but I could do it quick. Well, okay, first off, let me make, let me make this clear. Paris are non-premium, but they are still doable. Just because a task is non-premium does not mean you don't do it. It just means that you do it with caution, okay? It means that there are certain criteria that it has to meet in order for you to go ahead and do it. Now. Moving on to the second half of his statement. The lawn chairs take way too long and the chems could be done, be going while I sleep. Okay, big, big, big mistake. First off, he's saying the lawn chairs take too long, meaning what? That you're just not gonna do them all around? You have to do them. They're worth too many points and they're premium. You have to do them. You don't have a choice, okay? Now, here's the problem though. He has 37 tasks left and he's running out of time. That doesn't include the tickets and that doesn't t include the fact that he's already running like an 1100 average. This is terrible, okay? This is not good. And so now he's talking about making the chem. So let's go back up and see what it is he's looking at. So he's got uh, Paris for 1600. He's got the garden chairs for 1760, and then chemicals are at 1170. Why is he even thinking of prepping chemicals? Why? What on earth would make 
you want to do that. They're not worth, they're not even in the realm of 2,000 points. They only take two hours. That could that time sleeping would be better prepped, prepping feet or glass or something else that is worth high value, right? So that if he does come up, he at least has them done because he is cramped for time. So chemicals should have never even been thought of. Now, this is something that I see so many people doing, and I can't tell you how many people hit me up and try to prep chemicals all the damn time. They're trying to do sugar and chemical tasks, and they're worth like less than 1,400 points. And I'm just like, no. Okay, listen to me. You have, you have a couple of things that are in your list. They're in your list because of points value. They're in your list because of the type of tasks that they are. So imagine a, a seat, and this one has the 1,100 seat taken, and then it has the production taken. You're not going to have all production tasks. You're not going to have all 1,100 point tasks. You're going to have a variety. And this has taken up that seat, that variety. If you pick it up and move it off the seat, something else has a chance to sit down. But that chemical task is going to come back and sit in another seat. And now you just have, you've just swapped it into a different chair. It's just a problem, okay? So if, the, if and when the chemical tasks come back, it's more than likely not going to be worth very many points. And even if it is, you're running out of time. You see what I'm saying? You can't afford this kind of downtime. Now, feed is usually worth more than chemicals. Now, granted, it takes longer, but if you're prepping it at night, that wouldn't matter. And it has a way less likelihood of, of reoccurring, okay? so. Right now, chemicals is absolutely off limits, not even in the realm of even being looked at. If anything, like I said, he should have prepped something else, a longer factory production. Now let's look at the bottom half of his list. He has glass for 1320. So obviously we're not gonna prep that either. So now it's even more obvious that he should prep feed or sugar, feed or sugar, whichever one he thinks that might actually come in of a high points value. Now, notice how I said feed or sugar. Now, which one do you pick between those two? Let's go through what we know about those two. Well, the sugar task usually is reoccurring. 60% of the time it comes back. And it has a less likelihood of being worth higher points than the feed. So again, feed is still the way to go here. So no, he would not want to uh, prep chems. Now, that's his first mistake. His second mistake is not being able to do those garden chairs. And I told him, you have to do those. Now, yeah, you can do the Paris in the meantime because you're cramped for time, okay? Because of the fact that he has so many tasks left, yes, he can go ahead and do the Paris now. But this is where the everything kind of took a turn. And I, I, had a, I told him, I said, look, you're making a lot of critical mistakes and I'd like to speak with you. So when he was able to get to me, um, he did, and then we go through, and here's where the problem is. Um, let me see where he had, let me see if he sent me. Okay, so that's where I explained why not to do chems. Okay, then I said, okay, let me know what comes up after Paris. And he says, I spent 10 minutes trying to take a screenshot, but it gave me 58 wood for 1740, which it takes 10 minutes to make. So he did the wood and then I said, okay, cool. And he says, doing that gave me a 47 feed task, which is 1800-ish, but that would take me 12 hours because it's over by seven, unless I buy the seven, which is way expensive. The chairs are going, but it's ridiculously long tasks and I can't afford to wait uh, for one of those. So I need to do or cancel something else, maybe the monster. So again, what he could do is, depending on what time it is, he could have done the seven feed now and had them making, okay? And then before bed, put up the 40. Instead, what he's gonna do is he's going to, and this would have left his factories open so that he could prep better, but instead what he's probably gonna end up doing is putting the 40 feed up right before bed, opening his game, and then spending the first half of his morning six hours in the hole. 
You see what I'm saying? That's the wrong thing to do. So, yeah, don't do that. Okay, now with the garden chairs, this is where I said, well, can you put a token on them? That's where he said he only had one golden token left. Now, this is where shit goes bad. Okay, so let me get this right. You're unable to finish your tasks on time. And you have no golden tokens. And you, it's double points week for Mountain Epics. Now would be the time, given the fact that he has so many tasks left, his average is so bad, he has one golden token, and he has nothing going for him at this point. Okay? It would be pretty much time to abort this week and say, you know what? I really don't have much VU. I have no way to speed up my production. I am in a really bad position here with my average and time is running out. And so here's the thing. You cannot play mega like this. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. If you're in a position like him, then you, it would be ideal to play non-competitively and build up your resources. When I, you can't just decide to play Mega. You can't just wake up one day and go, you know what, my city is prepared to play Mega. It doesn't work that way. You have to be prepared to do so. You have to have the cash for the flights. You have to have the uncollected stuff in your past to get you out of a jam. You have to have storage space so that if you get an epic task, you have that available and you have, you have to have coin so that you can afford to do things like epics on a whim. You gotta have a VU, a, a stockpile of VU and deeds and dozer and you, you gotta have war cards, like massive amounts of war cards, okay? You gotta be launching war attacks and, and stacking those up like crazy because you gotta be able to clear those 3000 point tasks. Now, here's a little hint on that. Don't do war cards assignments if you're in a week where you know you're not gonna win and you know that your average is bad. If you know that it's, it's not ideal, don't even waste it because you know what? Those damn war cards, those get expensive, okay? They, you will eventually get to a point where it's like 100 and something keys just to upgrade and where it's an, 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 an an obscene amount of cards to upgrade. And if you get to that point, it you want it to be because you actually won Mega, okay? So let's say that you're having a really bad week and you get a 3K war task. It's, is it really ideal to burn through your war cards? No, just, just cancel the damn thing. If you know you're not gonna win anyways, or you know that you're doing really shitty, there is no sense in wasting your resources in when you could start fresh the next week and actually do good, you know? Uh, war cards are not easy to obtain for those people who play the contest and the contest only. And even when you obtain them, like I said, you know, eventually at some point you're gonna run out of upgrades. You know, they only go up so high. And realistically, um, a lot of people that camp level 24 and play mega, they plan to be there a while. So eventually you're gonna to start to run out of options here. Now, in this given situation, what I would advise him to do is to play the contest of mayors non-competitively, do some quick and fast, easy points, and abort this week. And then spend the weekend building up some coins and doing some of those double point epics for Mountain so that he has some regeneration of tokens here. He's not gonna be able to play like this. If, if he had told me that he didn't have tokens in the first place, I wouldn't have, I would have advised him not to do the caps on a token. I, it's a, it was a waste. It was a complete waste. Every bit of cash and resources that he puts into this week of calm is a waste because he's, he's not prepared and he's not gonna finish on time. And it's just, it's not ideal to waste. What's the point in wasting your stuff, right? Now, what people don't realize is you have to be, you have to pretty much take into account that there are certain tasks you can do and certain tasks you cannot do. The ones that you can't do, you have to remember, if you want to camp and play Mega and win, you have to make up for not being able to do upgrade tasks. That is not an easy thing to do. You guys got to remember, you are avoiding upgrading, okay? And upgrade tasks can pop up in multiples. CPT had like six damn upgrade tasks this week. It was ridiculous. All at once, I mean. And 
the game is going to throw that kind of stuff at you. And then you're stuck in a predicament where it's like, okay, I have airport, I have production, factory production, keys, VU, monster. You, you only have so many options here. And when you start crossing them off, you're down to like four types of tasks you can do. And if two out of the four you can't even really do because you, you either don't have money or tokens, then you're going to have serious problems, okay? So um, make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're not making these types of mistakes. And just make sure that if you are making these types of mistakes that you correct them. Know when to quit. Know when, know when your week is totally screwed and when to, to abort mission, okay? Um, it's really, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this game is very time consuming and it's one of those things where if you don't have the time to really put into it, then you really shouldn't be playing the contest of mayors competitively. Uh, it's not for everybody, but it's, it's one of those things where you really got to be on top of it. And when I mean on top of it, I mean, if there is a point in time in your day where you're spending six, seven, eight hours a day not opening your game, then you're not going to be able to win. Not realistically, okay? Uh, realistically, what you need to have happen is you need to be on top of it. You need to constantly be clearing tasks. Now, like right now, let's say that you're on your way to work, okay? You've set up your, your morning run and you don't open your game until you get home. You're not gonna be able to do that. Another vital mistake that I see people make, and this is the last one before I end this video, is people try to cram everything into a day or two days. And what I mean by that is this. They think that they can just decide when they have time for the game and when they don't. When they decide, you know, how many people say, um, Oh, well, you know, I know I've had, I've had a lot going on the last couple days, but tomorrow I plan on doing everything. You cannot. <laughs> That's a good one. That's funny. Um, no, it doesn't work that way, dude. It doesn't work like that, where it's like, oh, today I, I plan on playing for 10 hours straight and clearing some tasks. Doesn't work, okay? I'll tell you why it doesn't work. Because of things like this. You're going to sit down to do that, and you mark my words. You're, you may get a couple of tasks done but you're gonna run into a jam and it's gonna be like, well, that didn't work. I planned on playing all damn day and now I'm stuck waiting. Now I'm stuck waiting on, on this factory thing or I'm stuck waiting on a timer for an epic or uh, the monster's not here yet and that's my next move or whatever the case may be. And just those little waits, those little delays in your day, it could screw up half your day. And that is exactly why when you have the opportunity to get shit done, you need to take it, okay? So when, do you know how many people, I've got two girls in my comm training course that I speak to quite frequently. There's one girl that she does, she, she tells me, okay, uh, so VU, launch VU is my next move. And she's on the game and she's actively playing. And I'm like, yes, and then let me know ASAP once you're done with that so that we can get this shit going. The other girl, she'll do this. Let's say it's two totally different behaviors, two totally different girls, and they both do the same thing. I'll hear from the one within 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, got that done. Now I'm onto this. Okay, got that done. Now I'm onto this. And then the other one is like, oh, I'm working on it. Oh, I just don't have the stuff for repair. And oh, I might have to do a video. I'll hit you up in an hour or two. No, no. Get it done and then get me updated. By the time she manages to do her one damn task, this other girl's done like seven. Now, now this, the girl that's done seven has hit a little bump in the road and she has a little minor delay. Now, during her delay, she's not just sitting idly. She's hunting for rares. She's looking at her list. She's preparing, okay? This is what she's doing. The other girl is just now finishing up with her VU. That's what I'm trying to say. You, if you play like that, you're not going to get anything done. You have to constantly be trying to get shit done. 
And if you're on this mosey along, oh, I'll just get to it kind of attitude, you're going to have big problems. You're going to be somebody who is constantly struggling to finish your tasks, okay? Now, what ends up happening is people get stuck in a jam and they think, well, oh, I can finish. Yeah, you can. If you start paying an obscene amount of cash, if you start burning through all your tokens, if you start cutting corners, you know, but realistically, you want to just keep a very steady pace. You know what I mean? You just want to, okay, got that done. Got it. Done. Boom. Okay. My, do you know how many people here will say, okay, I know I've got chemicals that need picked up in two hours. I can finish that task. They go, they go do their work or they watch a movie and then in two hours, they're back on the game. They're clearing their task and they're working towards something else. Whereas somebody else is like, oh yeah, I did have chemicals. That's, oh, it's been six hours. I think I'll go ahead and do that now. No, you should have had that shit done the moment that timer came up. I'm serious. Like these little things, these little delays, you got to remember, you got five days, okay? Out of that five days, how much of the time do you spend asleep? Eating, living, having a, you know what I mean? Like loading, <laughs> just loading the damn game, watching my videos. I mean, you really don't have a lot of time to be dinking around. You see where I'm going with that? So it's really important that you guys zoom when you can. And when you're idle, always be doing something, okay? Always, always be doing something trying to, to there's always something you could be doing. Always. I don't care what you got going on. There's always something you can be doing. You need to prepare for anything. If you, if you're doing your, your game and whatnot, and you were to get a 2400 epic task, ask yourself, are you prepared for that? Can you do that? And if the answer is no, then get your damn self prepared. If you do an epic task, do not just finish it immediately. Another little tip for you guys, and this is super important. If you get a task for an epic and you are not ready to actually go all the way to gold, if the task is less than 40 points, so bronze, you can do it and not take the repercussions of it. As long as you don't hit bronze, the, the house will not convert and it will just go right back to being an epic, okay? So meaning that it's not going to destroy the house and it's not going to give you bronze. So it's just going to act as though you didn't do anything. So that's a, a good way to get some of those lower task epics done if you absolutely needed to and you couldn't go to gold. Okay. Now, another thing is always save your epics. Like, let's say that you, um, let's say you have a, an epic point for 50 points, like to earn 50 epic points and you do it. Stop. Don't do any more. Okay, wait and see, give it even 12 to 16 hours if, if you have the inventory to do it and see if you get any other epic tasks. And if you don't, then go make sure you leave yourself enough time to hit gold, though, then go ahead and finish your epic because most of the time you will get another task for it. Okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and get this uploaded. I hope that some of these tips were helpful to you. Remember to like and subscribe because that's always super helpful and comment in the comment section on uh, any, in, you know, any feedback at all. If you have questions, if you just have something you want to say, you know, whatever the case may be, leave it in the comments. And uh, we also have a Facebook group and I'm, I've also been linking all of my guides in the description of my videos. So be sure to check those out as well as our Facebook page at SimCity Build It Missy NYT. All right, you guys, good luck.